Thank you, Officer Tran. Thank you, Officer Tran. Thank you. <laughs> and again, the sign-up sheets are simply for, I'd like to hear more, uh, I'd like to know more. Um, he will come back and work with a smaller group and do training. And uh, so that's what that sign-up list that's being circulated around is. You're not committing to uh, five hours a week, uh, but just simply saying, um, I would like to hear more. I may be interested. Okay. Um, we have a couple other presentations that we would like to do tonight. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to just highlight some infrastructure projects that have been going on. The Infrastructure Committee uh, is led by Vice President Roz Morocco, and she has been very busy this year with, with her committee. Uh, I'd like to highlight some of the major projects that are going on. Uh, in this building here, we have replaced eight air conditioning units. Uh, and How just, many are still working? They're all working. And uh, we are, we have increased the SEER rating on our uh, units, and we uh, estimate that over the next 15 years, we're going to be saving about $33,000 by having a higher SEER unit. Um, so, and I want to just say thanks to Kerry Atwood for your leadership through the Infrastructure uh, Committee. Uh, he was seeing that uh, things were getting done, and uh, we appreciate uh, his, his work on, on that project for us. I saw Duke Energy out today, and they are starting to replace our 116 street lights with LED lights instead of the old-fashioned lights. We're going to be saving about $50 a month uh, by having those LED lights. So you'll be seeing them with their, their boom, and uh, they're, they're working on that. That conversion did not cost the, the park anything. The non-potable water system is uh, still uh, uh, in the works. It's going to be replaced as soon as we have all of the parts and as soon as the preparation work is completed. Uh, all the pump motors that we have been working on through the summer are going to be uh, reused, so that uh, those that repair work will, uh, will uh, not be wasted. The uh, pavilion uh, patio repair. We had a retaining wall that was giving way and that has been uh, replaced with a new concrete retaining wall and new uh, uh, landscaping. Uh, so if you haven't been back there by the, uh, the pavilion, uh, take a chance to look at that. The entrance to our pool, there was a, a patch that was made uh, right outside the main pool uh, gate uh, by the uh, south parking lot. And that was crumbling and breaking up and, and it was a, a trip hazard. So we had that whole uh, triangle area replaced with a gradual slope uh, into the, into the uh, pool entrance. Speaking of the pool, we contracted with a professional uh, pool company. And they will be treating and maintaining our pool. They'll be uh, coming on site three times a week. And they will be uh, maintaining the chemical feeders, testing the water, skimming, vacuuming the pool, brushing the walls and the floors, making sure that all the equipment is working properly. Our maintenance team will continue to uh, uh, test and record twice daily the, uh, the pH and the chlorine levels. The pond maintenance, we have contracted with lake doctors, and uh, we're already seeing improvements in our seven ponds. The wooden fence. Uh, that's around the perimeter of our, our park. Uh, some places that is deteriorated to the point where it's a breach of security. And uh, Largo will only let us replace wooden fence with vinyl fence. And in some places we're going to put up an eight foot fence instead of the uh, six foot fence uh, for increased security. We have many trees that are growing up into the, uh, into the fence line. And that's an issue that we're dealing with, trying to remediate that uh, before we can uh, have the uh, fence installed. So we've been talking about this fence project for quite a while, and uh, we're, some things take, take a while to get uh, to fruition. So again, I want to thank Roz and her committee, the many people who are working on the committee, for all of these infrastructure projects. Sometimes it takes longer than we want it to, 
and we have uh, other things in the works that we want to work on and um, just wanted to highlight uh, those, those projects that we've had going on this year. Next, I would like to introduce Lisa Burley Collins. She has been working on a project about a traffic light uh, out by Starkey and Willow. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Lisa Burley Collins. Like he said, my mom and dad have been living here for about 15 years. Um, from the first time that I came to visit, I thought I was playing Frogger. I don't know who knows that game, but uh, it's pretty scary trying to get out of this community. Um, so uh, in 2018, um, my mother and I decided to adventure on something called the Largo Citizens Academy class. Uh, they haven't had it for 2019 or 2021. The next class they're going to have is going to be in 2022 in September. As of January, you can register for the class. It's a very good class. You are taken to each facility that runs the city of Largo, all the way from the library to the water to sanitation to the police department. It's on a Monday for two hours from six to eight. Uh, they get very in depth. They actually have a whole program with the canine units that allow you to go sit in jail and see where you get to sleep overnight if you get caught <laughs> drinking and driving. Uh, they also have a, um, it's a 10 week program, okay? And it was very informative. When you graduate, uh, you don't have to be on TV if you don't want to, but when you graduate, they do give you a certificate and they hand it to you on channel, whatever that local channel is. I'm sorry, I don't have it offhand. 732. 732, thank you. Um, and it's a Tuesday night, the graduation. Uh, if you do not go, you still get that. Um, but what I've gotten out of it is I am considered to be an ambassador for the city of Largo. So obviously we got hit with Corona. We haven't been able to do a lot in the courts and move things along the way we want to. Um, I embarked on trying to get a traffic light put in back in 2018. And I tried also in 2019. And the one component that we really needed was the support of the community. In order to have the support of the community, you have to go to the people who are a little higher up. And unfortunately, in 2018 and 2019, Paradise Island property managers did not want to have anything to do with it. They did not want to put a strip out there to count the traffic. They wanted nothing to do with, with the city of Largo. Um, I continue to press on and try to find ways that we can make this happen. Um, I believe in strongly in the power of God because I got an email yesterday, which was very interesting. They had no idea that I was coming here. Uh, and I'm just going to read it quickly. It just says, uh, it was very nice speaking with you last week uh, regarding the intersection. Uh, as discussed with the Pinellas County, is working on a design for a sidewalk improvement along Starkey Road with a mid-block crosswalk planned as a part of the new improvement approximately 1,000 feet north of Willow Avenue set intersection. Well, she also went on to give me the project manager at the county that is uh, taking care of all of this, and it lit a fire under me. I contacted them right away. I said, 1,000 feet north of Willow Avenue, you're damn near at East Bay. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to say any names, but I know a few people in here who don't drive. They walk. They try to catch bus. 
they've moved the bus stop down to where Apopo is. Mm -hmm. So um, they did connect me with, because normally this road here is a county road and Largo would have no financing a part of it, but they are combining their financings now uh, as of 2019. Uh, DOT is going to be a part of this project. Uh, the community of Paradise uh, Island has agreed to participate, uh, and Pinellas County is the one that's working on the design of this sidewalk. It was going to be only one sidewalk on one side of Starkey. Um, I thought the good news today was when I spoke to the Pinellas County contact that was given to me. His name is Tom Washburn. He stated to me that they are in the process of financing the final uh, infrastructure and the engineer, the engineering service department pretty much has 99.9% .9 of it done. And it's supposed to be, <laughs> it's supposed to be completed um, for approval on December 22nd. This year? This year. Excuse me. Excuse me. The paperwork for approval is for December 22nd. That gives all of us a little bit of wiggle room to give input, which is very, very important. Okay? So we're going to get survey forms that are going to be dropped off at the office here. You can come in and give your input. Uh, I already spoke with the gentleman today. And he agreed that we are going to not put a crosswalk 1,000 feet north of Willow. We are looking to get a traffic light put there. And then 3,000 feet to the left of south of Willow, there will be a crosswalk to accommodate for them moving the bus stop. Okay? So that is very important. I, I'm so happy that I'm able to give this news to you because I have just recently moved in the park and I am officially one of your neighbors. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I want you to know that I have been working on this diligently since 2018 with emails going back and forth. And I just thought it was quite amazing that I got this email uh, November 9th uh, and then I also had a follow-up call and they asked me to come I had no idea how many people were going to be here um, it was after hours I got a phone call and they asked me to come pick up a little swag bag so there are some uh, recycling things over there you got koozies for the beer drinkers <laughs> you've got some stickers to go onto your refrigerator magnets and please take one of each of the pamphlets because they tell you how you as a part of this community there's so many things to offer seniors in this community that so many people are not aware of okay and it's very simple there's a card on that table please take one of those cards it'll it'll bring you to a website it's the largo community.com it is so informative and the best part, like I said, is that the fact that we are going to be allowed to have some input. Um, I think it's wonderful that we're going to go from one sidewalk to two sidewalks, one on each side, and we will have one traffic light at Willow. I think it's called a trip light. Trip light. So if there's nobody there, the traffic can come flow, but as soon as you get there, it's going to give you the opportunity to get out of this community without feeling like it may be your last. <laughs> okay, so with that, I am just um, not going to take up too much of your time. Like I said, I just wanted to be able to let you know that I am, I am so excited to work with everybody here in the community. I am so excited that I was asked to speak. Thank you. Um, wonderful, wonderful things have been done in this community. And you know, whether we're inside of this community or we're outside of this community, we're still inside of City of Largo. We all need to have a level of interdependence. Meaning, we see a stop sign, stop and count to three. Don't just roll past it. If we see someone crossing the street and there's not a stop sign there, be courteous and let that person go. 
I can understand if you need to run in and hurry up and go to the bathroom. It doesn't mean you got a, a free ticket to do the, pass the speed limit. Okay? That's the what, number one thing that can save lives. And that is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help save lives. I had four goals that was given to me when I took this class. I wasn't fancy and sent out stuff to everyone, but uh, the four goals were to have a traffic light at Willow and Starkey Road, to have a sidewalk on at least one side of the road with a crosswalk, and to have this community become a recycling community. So also on that table is information on how you can start getting yourself ready for recycling. I am hoping and praying that it comes our way because we have to take care of our earth. And it starts with us in our home. Okay, so at this time I just wanna say thank you very much for having me speak. And if there's any questions that you have, if I can answer them, I will. If I cannot answer them, I will speak to the right people and I will get the answers to where they need to go. Okay, can we be at least courteous and safe? And if you can't turn left, turn right and do a Huey. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. I had one lady wrote in the book, she goes, I wait till it's clear both ways and then I turn left. Well, she's boxing 12 people up. Exactly. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> I'm trying my best to make that not happen. You always do a Huey. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. You are not only an ambassador for Largo, you are Paradise Island ambassador, and uh, we're glad you're here, and uh, I can tell you're a spark plug that's going to keep at it. So. Yeah, especially when you have all the right parts. Works. Thank you. The next presentation uh, will be our HOA president, Rose Petito. And I, I introduced my board, I guess, I just assume everybody knows me. I'm Paul Snellenberger, the president of the co-op. So, uh, Rose. Thank you, Paul. Good evening, everyone. Before I get started, I'd like to have Dawn, please stand up. Dawn. I made a big mistake. I introduced you as a director. She's the vice president of the board. <laughs> so I apologize. I just want to make that known. Okay, we've been working hard since February of this year until now. I want to stress, the HOA is not just strictly bingo. We are an association that works for the entire community. The entire community. My key word this whole year, since I took over is, and it was before I took over, was unity. Unity. We need to have unity in a community because if you don't have the community, you have division. Yes, we do. And we don't want division, we want a community we can be proud of. So we've worked very hard at that. I'm gonna go through a few things that the HOA has done other than bingo. We'll talk bingo at the end. <laughs> the first important thing we did was we retained our own lawyer. We have a lawyer that we work with. He has worked with us for many hours diligently, helping us to get our bylaws up and current with these state statutes. And that is state statute 723, if you want to go check them out. That took us many, many months of doing that. We involved the entire HOA community to participate in it. We had people that responded. We sent out what we were doing, how we were doing it, what we were changing, we asked for opinions, we took them to the attorney, and everything was done transparently. That's another word, transparency, okay? We created a media committee. I think you're all familiar with that. They have now created the Paradise Island Facebook page. We now have 400 residents as members of that Facebook page, so it's going very well. That's a page that you'll get a lot of information on. That is the to-go place, Paradise Island Lago. That's where you'll get information about the uh, non-portable being out, about hurricane preparedness, whatever is important to this community, that's the to-go place. 
Okay, if you don't have a computer, 732 has the same information. So we do have a media committee that works with that. We started advertising um, our board meetings so that it's transparent. We've invited anybody from the HOA who wants to come, anybody who's an HOA member or a, a resident here, they are welcome to come to our board meetings. They are not closed, they are open. We invite you to come to hear what we're discussing. There are certain times we have to have a closed meeting, but those are few and far between, okay? So we are transparent. We've initiated an outreach program to the needs of our residents. That was started through the HOA. This evolved into what you know now as Paradise Island Caring Hearts, which is a wonderful outreach that helps our residents um, and the wonderful work that the volunteers, we had a volunteer training session or information set, uh, meeting that we had volunteers to come and hear about us. We talked about it, and through that we got several volunteers that are working. We've got a core group that are very actively connecting with residents in here that need assistance. Just like I said before, you are the eyes and ears of this community. We don't know everything. My, what do you call it, that uh, magic ball? It's my crystal ball is in the shop getting fixed, so I don't know what's going on. So I need you to tell me if there are issues going on with residents. You have Paradise Island Caring Hots, call them, let them know. My neighbor next door, you know, the mail is backing up. It's been there for four or five days. Maybe somebody needs to check on him. As a neighbor, you find out, is he in the hospital because he needs somebody to take his mail? Has he broken his hip and he's recovering at home? He can't come out to get his mail. Call Paradise Island, Karen Hartz, they will arrange for a volunteer to take care of that. So far, they've done an awesome job. They've also taken over the wheelchairs and the walkers that they will give out to residents if they need them temporarily. They've also initiated the Largo Library, bookmobile that comes here every two weeks now. So these are things that the HOA has initiated, and you as an entire community have participated in. Not just HOA, not just co-op. Everybody has participated in this, so that's great. Unity, transparency. We're working closely with the co-op to encourage unity and become, uh, that's with the Alliance Committee. You're not aware of that? There's a committee called the Alliance Committee. It's made up of co-op and HOA members. We meet, we brainstorm, we talk about issues going on, we try to resolve them, and get answers for them. And I'm part of that, and I'm so happy that I am because I'm learning a lot, and I'm seeing that a lot of things are being done. A lot of people say, oh, nothing happens in this community. A lot is being done. A lot is being done behind the scenes that people are not aware of. So if you're not, if you're one of those people, come to our board meetings. You'll hear a lot. Come to the community meetings. You'll hear a lot, a lot that's going on like Paul said, the infrastructure, okay? There's a lot going on in this park, a lot of positive things. Um, we also, um, through the HOA, initiated a CPR training program. We had that here in connection with the um, social committee. They assisted us and we had training for CPR and I'm sure we'll be doing that again maybe on an annual basis and they were uh, trained on how to use the, the, the defibrillator here that we have. So that was a very good program we had also. Um, I personally have weekly meetings, well now it's monthly, with because we're so good now, <laughs> with, with the co-op president, and we discussed a lot of issues. Some of the issues we brought up was, first we were going to put a sign out front that said, please don't block the intersection. But now we've gotten a traffic light, wonderful. We've talked about other things. We've talked about the crime. And what did we get? We got Officer Tran. Thank you, Officer Tran. There's a lot of things that we talk about behind the scenes, and things are getting done. Things are moving because of unity and transparency. There's got to be more of that constantly. We had a membership drive. The HOA had a membership drive, which provided us a current registered members of 230 plus members of the HOA. We now are part of the orientation when new residents move in. 
HOA has a representative there to meet and greet them and let them know what's going on in the community. We've also worked on our insurance and our liability. That was a big project too, to get updated insurance and liability. These are all things we've been doing since February. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, we also developed a, um, a job description and also a detailed procedure for every function that we do. Everything that we're involved in, the HOA, there is a procedure book and instructions how to do it, and we're all being cross-trained how to do it. I always joke that I have to bring my hat rack with me because I don't know what hat I'm wearing at what time. Sometimes I'm working over here with the bingo. Some, this Thursday I'll be a caller. I'm being trained as a caller. Sometimes we'll do other things. I'm helping out with the caring hearts. So we're all being cross-trained to do different things. That's important because not one person can do everything, but everybody can help and do everything. Okay? Um, now, final. Bingo. <laughs> we put win bingo. We had to wait. We had to follow the COVID um, guidelines, CDC guidelines, but we were able to bring it back up and running in, I think it was September. Okay, and we brought it up to the 21st century. We now introduce the POS system, which is a point of sale system. So when they come in to buy their bingo stuff, they don't have to go from table to table with money for this one card and money for that card. They just come up like in a, in a grocery store. We put it in, it prints out their receipt, they take the receipt through the line, they get their stuff, and they sit down. That helps them, and it also helps us, because now our treasurer, Carlene, can run all the reports. And we get all the reports right out. We know exactly how many games we sold, what kind of games we sold, how much money was uh, made in the kitchen, or lost in the kitchen, or lost out here, because we've been in the red a lot. But we're up to the 21st century and doing that. Let's see. Um, we've also reduced our kitchen resources so that we don't have to run around doing all the shopping. Frank used to run here, there, everywhere. We now order our, most of our supplies from Cisco because they delivered here. So that saves us a lot of time also. Does it save us money? Yes. yes, it does. We've done comparison shopping. We've done all that. Also, we have now, let's see, uh, we created a Facebook page. Bingo has their own Facebook page. Anybody in the whole community here and outside the community can go on that Facebook and find out everything that's going on with Bingo. We can tell them what our jackpot is up to. We can tell them if they have to wear a mask anymore. Everything is right there. They can ask us questions. They can ask us what's on the menu. We put all the games on there, the prize payouts. Uh, also the kitchen, what the kitchen menu looks like and everything like that. So this is just a few of the little things that we've done since February. So HOA is active, alive, and we hope to do more with the community, working with the social committee, working with the co-op, and offering a lot more to the entire community of Paradise Island. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Rose. And next, it is my wonderful privilege to introduce Chama Skipper. Uh, Chama has uh, been a breath of fresh air in our community. And we are so glad that he's here. He's, he brings with him 31 years of land development and property management. So he's been around the block and it shows. And, uh, <laughs> Everybody hear me okay? I don't like using a mic. In the back, can you hear me? My wife says I got a big voice. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, anyway, a lot of good acts to follow here. I hope I could do as well. Um, first of all, I'll let you guys know uh, this is your community. All right, you know. And nothing against any board members, past or present, but boards come, boards go. I'm planning on being here to work with the future, current boards and future boards for a long time. So I know there's some stuff that's been around about otherwise, but just set the record straight, I plan to be here until I retire, which is six to eight years from now. 
uh, depending on what uh, happens with the economy and money and how much I need to make. Uh, <laughs> my wife and I plan to travel a little bit when we're done, re retiring. Uh, she's three years younger than me, uh, so I'm going to make her have to work a little bit longer than she wants. Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, you guys got a great community here. I've been blown away that those last couple of weeks, you know, I was participated in, well, I didn't participate. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to, but I saw a bunch of men and women moving furniture that I wouldn't pick up in and out of here for a flea market. <laughs> and the place, I, I was here one minute and the place was all empty and I, and I turned around and came back like 20 minutes later and there's stuff everywhere. There's people everywhere. <laughs> Unbelievable. And then we had the, the Halloween uh, parade, which was a blast, oh, yeah. thanks to the court, uh, gentleman right here headed up, Walt. Uh, had a great time at night. And then uh, the craft show and, and the crafts. Are any of the craft girls here? The, the magic girls, I call them. The stuff they made that they sold. I, uh, I came early before anyone else on Friday, or late, I guess, and, and bought a few things for the office because they came back and sold and said, oh, we need some of this stuff. Um, for our Christmas decorations. And then uh, I was going to come back on Saturday, and uh, I was going to come here about 10, but we had a problem. I had to put out a message, uh, which is something I want to talk about in a minute, the one call system, but tell you I'll just quick story, then I'll get to that. Um, so I'm at my desk, I'm writing a message, and, and whether you know it or not, I can watch you guys about anywhere and anything you do, from the pool, the clubhouse, uh, <laughs> and anywhere. So I, I go, I, I bring up the clubhouse, see how things are going, see how crowded it is, and the table right over there where all the crafts were sitting, the really cool stuff on Friday night, they were gone. It was 10 o'clock, and most everything was gone. I mean, they had the table with, they had it in different levels with different things. It's gorgeous stuff, too. Cutest stuff, I mean, just professionally done as you'll find anywhere. And it was all gone. I'm so disappointed because I want to come back and get some more. Um, so anyway, and I learned today, you know, it's funny. I tell people, I learn something here new every day. I've been here since, really full-time since really September 1st. It's kind of part-time. Uh, half of July and August, uh, but I learned something new here every day, and I learned today that the craft club actually makes their stuff right here between Wednesday between 1 and 3. And I find it interesting that as much as I'm out and about, I've never been in this clubhouse on Wednesday between 1 and 3. <laughs> <laughs> but I will be, because I want to see what they're doing. Anyway, uh, real quick, what, something we've implemented is called the one call system, and uh, we don't have the emails in yet. We're still verifying everyone's email because the state of Florida says we can't use the email unless we have your permission. So we're cross-referencing the list because I got an email list from Rose. Thank you for the, all the HO. And then the email list we had for the, that was just updated uh, for the co-op. And so we're making sure I have everyone's permission to use it. And you'll be able to start getting these messages not only on your phone, but via email. But what we're running into was I find interesting, and I do the same thing, uh, I get a call and I look at it and go, well, I wonder why the office is calling me. Oh, I'll call them back. <laughs> and so the minute we send out a message that says, hey, the water's off, or like we're going to send out one this week to remind everyone about the dance, we'll get 10, 20 calls. Hey, I just missed your call. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see a call from us, from the office, and it is the office number, I programmed it so it is the office number, listen to your voicemail first. I know people get away from that. You know, it's hard for me to believe that I live in my life to where I saw the fax machine come into play that was the machine of machines, and now hardly anyone uses fax. And then voicemail came about, and now people don't really use voicemail because our phones tell us who's calling. So we don't listen to voicemail anymore. So if you don't pick up the call and hear the message, check your voicemail before you call because we'll just say, hey, check your message. <laughs> <It's called> you. <laughs> uh, anyway, so and you're going to probably start getting a message at least once or twice a week. And you do have the ability, if you get tired of it, to opt out, but I urge you not to because if we're sending out something, it's something you really should know about or would like to know about. Maybe don't realize it, but we'll tell you, I'd like to know about it. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about is one source. And, and one source hasn't been utilized very well here in the community. Uh, I know that Brian had a lot going on with the transition with resource taken over from the previous management company and, and other issues. Um, don't tell me I said that. And. <laughs> But we haven't used one source the way we should. And one source is a really good tool, and, and everyone could sign up for it, and, and probably a lot of you haven't. And it is something you have to do on a computer. I know a lot of people you know, still aren't or don't like to get on computers as much as, as some people do who are younger than us and live on computers. But it, you can go on, and you could uh, issue, like if you have a concern report, 
instead of coming to the office, and you're always more than welcome to come to the office, but instead of coming to the office, you could enter and utter the maintenance request and then say whatever you want to say, and it'll be emailed to me directly. The minute you hit send, it'll be emailed to me, and then I'll have a, a record of it. And it also gives me the opportunity through the system a reminder. If I don't answer it or get back to it, it reminds me a couple days, hey, you need to look into this, and which is a huge help for me because we juggle a lot of balls around here, and I hate when I drop one. I have occasionally uh, and, and will in the future. <laughs> um, but you could use that. So if you haven't signed up for one source yet and you're interested in it, Come by the office, I'll walk you through it, we'll give you the paper, uh, we have to send you, you were all sent a letter at one time, you may not remember this, but with an access code. If you've lost that, I can get you another one and we can get you on and you can start using it. Uh, let's see, what else? I know you guys have been sitting a long time, so I'm going to hurry through this. Talk about that. Uh, you know, I, I, I've told people the last couple days that, you know, I have, a, I have an 18 year, 18 year old, <laughs> an 18 year goal. We'll all probably be moving a little much slower then. Uh, I have an 18-month goal to improve what I can around here. Now, again, I started off saying, you guys got a great community, and the community is you guys. But I'm here to help in any way I can. Uh, I have, in 18 months, I'm hoping that every problem that has existed I've heard from people has either been addressed or remedied, or we have a way to remedy it uh, to where it, it's, everyone understands it. Because I think a lot of times there's a lot of misunderstanding here of what's going on. You know, I'm anxious for the, this board and, and next year's board to start committees. Committees are a great way to get everyone in the community involved. If you have five committees and you have seven people in each committee, that's 35 people involved. We hold committee meetings here. Uh, one, uh, we have five committees, which pretty much could cover everything, and every day for one week at 2 o'clock there will be a committee meeting here. So anyone in the community who wants to know what's going on has a the ability to come here and sit at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and hear what's going on and, and give their input. Because what I get is a lot of times when we go to the board and the board's uh, approving something, we go, hey, we don't know anything about this. What's this? Why are we doing this? This will give everyone the opportunity to, to see it. And then maybe we can, with the technical uh, uh, assistance of Jim here, you know, do the, uh, or he can show me, which I need help with that, uh, to do uh, the Zoom where you could just log in and watch it from home if you wanted to. But I really like to get the committees going. Uh, it will really help your community and gets everyone involved and, and then you know what we hope to do is when the committee's there that someone on the committee will, will say hey I think I'd like to be on the board so it's kind of like training wheels to get on the board and then once you're on the board you know everything's going on and it will work really smoothly I've done this successfully in one community I've only got one community to do this it was a community called Terra HOA down in uh, Bradenton it was 2,200 lot community huge and we did this down there, and the difference it made over, over the time that I was there was astronomical. All the complaining went away, all the problems went away, because everyone, everyone knew or had the opportunity to know what was going on. So I think it would really be beneficial here, and one of the things we're working on. Um, and I could go on, because I like to talk. Just ask my wife, like I said. But that's it. We're going to go to a, Yes, sir. When is that meeting? Well, they have, we don't have them yet. Oh. We're going to get them set up. Like I said, either yet this year or probably it's going to be with the new board because really it's already November, December, not a whole lot happens in December, and then your election is January 20th. You'll be receiving your 60-day notice in the mail on or before November 20th. That will remind you to put it out, and we'll also send out notices on the one call. Um, and then if you want to run for the board, you have 14 days, I believe it is, 15 days, to tell us you want to run for the board, and then another five days after that, to submit your bio uh, of who who you are and what you want to see in the community, and then we send it out on the 30-day notice, and then we'll have the meeting. But we are doing the electronic voting this year. If those who have signed up for it or want to sign up for it, uh, I'm still learning about it. Jim's been very helpful with this. Uh, I have a class on it uh, next week at our office to, to know more because I've I've never done electronic voting. This is something new for me, as it is going to be for you. But uh, we'll get all that word out so everyone's comfortable with electronic voting. But January 20th is your annual meeting. Nineteenth, excuse me, November nineteenth. No, January, January nineteenth is the board meeting. Is it the executive committee or is the committee of the residents? No, the committee should be of the residents. There should be the way it should work is one board member is a liaison to the chairperson. That chairperson brings two to five people or two to four people to the 
board for approval because the board needs to gets the right to approve the committees and then they become a committee and they go off and do what the board asks them to do the projects they want to look into you know with me helping them this isn't this doesn't take work work for me I'll actually be at each meeting I'll do the legwork because we're heavy lifting for the committees you want proposals I'll get proposals you need uh, engineers to talk to you I get that whatever help I need to give or if the committee says no we got this we want to do it on our own then they do it on our own then they bring from their meeting what they vote on they take to the liaison of the, of the board member like for this example I'm going to pick on Ross back there she's the infrastructure really the the, the everything uh, committee for outside so her chairperson would report to her and then she would bring it to the board for board approval so it kind of works like that so the five to seven people then goes to the board then the board approves it I didn't lose anyone without I talked to them way too fast. Any other questions before we move to the question and answer period? With that, I'll get back to Paul. Good. Thank you. Thank you, John. As you can tell, he's bringing a lot of fresh ideas and experience to us, and we are certainly open and uh, want to be led by, uh, by his experience. So, uh, I'm watching the clock. Uh, a town hall meeting usually uh, has an opportunity for people to speak, and uh, I, I want to provide just a little bit of time for that. Um, but let me let me talk a little bit about.